everyone. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and we are continuing our cool mini series all about the brand new extensibility model in Visual Studio. And uh, joining me to continue that mini series is Etienne from Are You Studio hey, Site. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good at you. It's good to see you. Nice to see you too. Long time no see. Cool. So, what are we talking about today? Um, previous episodes, we were doing a little intro. We talked about the output window and how you can extend that. We also talked about how to extend your own tool windows. And now I think we're going to dive into the editor proper, right? Yes, indeed. Um, today, I would want to, to demo you how to make an extension that adds a command uh, to Visual Studio and do some changes to your text documents. Sweet. So um, before we hop into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you working on these days? Yeah, sure. So for people who don't know me, I am ATN. I work on the Visual Studio team, more specifically into the editor, search tool, and extensibility area. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing this for six years and I really enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, you've been here as long as I've been here, more or less. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, we'll figure it out together. <laughs> yeah, time flies. Sure, well, I'm excited to get into the editor because that's something that a lot of people like to extend. So let's dive in, shall we? Sure, yeah. And so for uh, this demo, I prepared you an actual extension that I will uh, show you. And that extension is the uh, encode and decode base64 extension. Now, what you see on my screen here is an actual uh, solution that contains a lot of samples for the, the new extensibility model of uh, Visual Studio. And you can find all these samples uh, here on GitHub. So link is down in the description. Uh, you can just click on it and have access to all the code that we look to uh, today. So now to go back to Visual Studio, um, so the idea of this extension is basically just to add a command here that will allow you to encode or decode base 64 text based on what you have selected into uh, your text document. Um, so the first step for this is that you have to declare uh, that you have an extension for Visual Studio. And we have a file here um, we, which does this. Um, mm -hmm. Something interesting about this file is that the, the first thing is that there is this attribute here, which basically tells Visual Studio, hey, this file will contribute to Visual Studio. And then Visual Studio will magically grab this and, and instantiate whenever it's needed. Then we will um, inherit from extension, and that's basically where we define the information about my extension, you know, like the information that appear, for example, in manage extensions. So in this, inside of this uh, information, we have a bunch of metadata, which is, for example, um, the ID of the extension and the display name uh, or the description. And you can find this directly to my Visual Studio that I deployed with my extension question. If I go into manage extension and install, you can see my extension that is here encode or decode base64 sample extension and that match exactly what I have here. Makes sense. And so this seems like business as usual because we've seen yes this window before in previous parts, but nice to see that it's consistent. <laughs> yeah, that's basically just the startup of your extension. Now I guess the more interesting part is like how do you actually add the commands to Visual Studio? And for this I have another class here. Um, which is similar, there is again this attribute at the top, but this time we inherit from command. And inside of this, by, um, by inheriting from command, I will have to overwrite two things, command configuration and execute command. I, I will come to this one a bit later, but let's start with command configuration if you want. Here we'll basically uh, define where does my extension, where does my command should go into, into Visual Studio and how it should look like. So the first thing that you may you may want to define is, for example, what is the text of my extension? What, what is the title? First of all, should it be manage extension? Should it be customized menu? Or should it be encode and decode base64? And so this string here is actually pointing out to a JSON file I have here, which is string resources.json, and which I, I found again this, this Nelata type, and it basically tells me here I, I'm defining what will be the name of my commands. Then once I have this, I can go ahead and uh, define some optional parameters, which will tell me, for example, where does my command should be placed. And here I'm saying it will be placed into the extension menu. Then I would define the icon. 
And then I will define where does my command should be visible. Here, for example, I'm saying that it should be visible when there is a solution uh, that is free loaded in Visual Studio. So if I go into my Visual Studio in question, right now I don't have any solution. However, if I open a solution, now it appears. My sweet. But we still got to enable it. Yes. So, so it's not enabled because then for the, um, I have another property here that is enable when, and which I say that I only want to enable it when the active document is a C sharp document. So now if I go back into my Visual Studio and open a C sharp document, now you can see the, the command is here and enabled. Great. Pretty straightforward. And so I'm assuming there's like a lot of different scenarios that you can give in this situation to have your extension be enabled or disabled or even visible. And yeah, I'm sure I'm that is listed somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So indeed you, like right now, um, I'm only enabling this for a C-sharp document, but you cannot have multiple uh, other kind of documents, right? And uh, actually this uh, little string, this parameter here is actually a regex pattern. So I can, I can create a regex to accept other kind of things, like C-sharp, but okay. also plus. This kind of thing. I can also enable um, everything. I can do it just by typing uh, dot plus, which is a valid regex for basically any text. Nice. Um, <laughs> and then that's not it. Because <laughs> like sometimes, you know, with a regex, you can do things like and, and of course, pull I want C sharp and, like C sharp and, let's say, being into the, in, being into a specific um, pass, for example. But um, I can also do that, for example, I could go ahead and add um, an end or a not or or. And so if I add not, for example, here I basically do the opposite. I will have my extension enabled for everything except C sharp documents. Sweet. Just yeah, so you can get really, really advanced with this if you want. So like only have this usable when it's not a C sharp file, the user hasn't selected anything, but also has like an image somewhere in their solution explorer. It's Eddie. Yeah. Okay, so now do you want to know what's happened when, when you click on the, wait, when you use the command? Yeah. So for this, um, this time I would need to override another method, which is the execute command async. And that's my method. And before diving into it, actually let me show you a little bit what the extension does. So if I just go into Visual Studio and come and select some text here, I just go into my menu and magically will encode this selection into base64. Now I can select it again, and I can decode it. Would you like me to zoom, perhaps? Yeah, maybe zoom in a little bit. You can see that next. Sure. Sorry about this. No worries. OK, let me redo this. So here I can select this and click Encode uh, to Base64, and we magically encode. And now if I select this again, I can decode it. Sweet. Very straightforward. Now, how does that work? I'm sure there's a lot more happening than that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, in order to, uh, to do this, let me try to make a little bit of space here. Um, the first thing I need is to get access to the text view of my um, active document. So into this execute command async method, I'm basically retrieving here a context, which is in which context is the developer who is using Visual Studio. And the context is basically what is the active document, the document where he has the focus. And right now I can get this with the get active uh, text view async. Now, a uh, text view. What is a text view? It's basically whatever is visible to the user into his text document. So a text view also includes not just the text, but also, for example, my selection. Like what is selected into my document, right? And then here we call it specifically a text view snapshot because with the extensibility model of Visual Studio, extensions are hosted in a separate process. And that makes that synchronizing the text in live with between what the user is typing and what my session does. Since it works asynchronously, it's a little bit difficult because we don't want to, to block the user as he types. So what we get is a snapshot of what was the state of the text view at the moment where I clicked my command in Visual Studio. Does that sound good so far? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So you're not just having to wait for the extension to do its thing. After exactly. 
execute it. Cool. So the next part, once I get this text to you, I will want to do some addition to, to my text in order to convert this into a, a text uh, to base64. And for this, I will use um, the method extensibility.editor.editic. And here I'm basically telling Visual Studio, okay, I want to do a change to the text document. From this, I will retrieve the actual text document editor. So now what I have here is not just the view with the selection, it's the actual content of the text editor. And I will be able to do a change to it. And then I will retrieve what is the selection that I had into the text view. Or should we say what are the selections? Because if you pay attention to this, uh, selection is actually, it's actually a, a list of selection. And I don't know if you, if you know that, Leslie, but in Visual Studio, you can, you can actually do multiple selection at once. So for example, I can go ahead and select this, but I can also hold the keys Control Alt and select that. And yeah. not have selections. I did know that, but I always forget the keyboard shortcut. <laughs> so it's... Yep. What was it? It's control <laughs> off. Yep. Got it. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, yeah, and so then I can just iterate through this list of selection. Mm -hmm. And then I will simply use my magic method here that will detect whether currently have already a back 64 text, and in which case we want to decode it, or if we want to encode my text to base 64. And as you can see, here is getting a string. And what I'm getting is that I'm taking the selection and I'm converting it to a string so I can do a change to that string. Then I return my new text, which is now the base64 code or the non-base64 one. And I will use uh, my text document editor.replace to replace the selection, so like the span of the selection of basically what is selected by my new text. And that's how I succeed to have two selections and convert both to base64 and then select them again and convert them back to normal text. Great. So, I mean, all of this looked really straightforward, which I really like. I think the more straightforward, the better, especially once you get into more complicated extensions and stuff. Yeah, I don't have any specific questions. I thought you explained it very well. I, I'm guessing, like, are there any maybe limitations that come with what you can and can't extend um, with the editor? Because it seems like you can do so much between having like the regex support and uh -huh. I mean, being able to just take advantage of anything the user selects in the editor, and including having like multiple selections. Yeah, really, it seems to support <laughs> support a lot. Yeah, there's, there's actually a problem that you're mentioning is because actually it's some um, things to consider when we make an extension for Visual Studio. You know, in, in Visual Studio, we want to um, for it as performance as much as possible. So therefore, we now consider that a uh, sub-party extension like this one um, are sort of second priority on um, what should be executed in Visual Studio. So that means that because we are running this asynchronously in a separated process and that we are getting a snapshot of um, the text document at the moment where the command has been run, um, potentially, if your command takes long to run, potentially the text document has changed since the moment where you tried to use some, some change here, possible like try to replace the text, but maybe the user has been typing or something since then. So maybe, the, maybe your text snapshot does not correspond to what you actually have in the text document anymore. Uh, and in this case, Visual Studio will basically reject the, the change that you are trying to do here. And you actually can have this information simply by getting the, the result from this edit async. So in my um, edit response here, I can go into this, uh, into this variable and I can get a boolean that indicates me whether the text change that I wanted to do has been successful, has been applied or not. And if not, I may have a message that tells me why. Maybe it's some issue actually in my extension, something that an error that I make, or it could be simply that, well, the user changed the text and I'm just telling you that, sorry, but the, the text document has changed, so the, the, therefore the, the change you want to do cannot be applied. I'm so these are sort of um, consideration we should take now. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I imagine it could get compl a little complicated since ultimately this action can happen asynchronously, but depending on how much right. shenanigans the, the developer gets into, that could create some conflicts.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. I mean, <laughs> the only other remaining question I have is, is this like in its fully formed state as far as being able to extend the editor goes or is there still more to come? Uh, there's still more to come. Um, you know, this is kind of just like um, the basic of the of the new extensibility model that we have in Visual Studio. Um, all this API, like right now, maybe you, you may want the K. Okay, why do I need to get all these just in order to make this small change? And it's, it's true that it may seem a little bit verbose, for example, and that's because we wanted to basically get on, the, on pair with Visual Studio Code uh, extension model. So if yeah. you ever made um, an extension for Visual Studio Code, this will sound now more familiar than with the previous extensibility that we had in Visual Studio. And now that we have this, I, I totally... I can tell someone, I can imagine tell someone telling that, okay, this, this is maybe a lot of things and a lot of complexity just for a small change here. So potentially in the future, now that we're on PN Visual Studio Code, maybe now we can look for uh, some ways to simplify all this uh, verbosity. And so maybe in the future, uh, we have an API that basically simplify um, all this small line of codes uh, simplify this into maybe one or two lines. That makes sense. Yeah, because I guess it could get a little verbose in terms of just making sure you're selecting the right window and making sure you're selecting the, the text that these are selected and taking the snapshot and going on from there until ultimately you can do what you came here to do, which is encode the text or decode. Exactly, text. yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great. Well, Etienne, thank you so much for sharing that. That is very exciting. I, once again, I am still blown away by just how much more streamlined even now the model has this new model is becoming so it's great to see that in the editor form and i think we still have more editor discussion to come right because next episode we're talking about the editor some more <laughs> yeah exactly i'm looking forward to this thank you so much Lucy. great and thank you all viewers for watching please go try out the sample that we just demoed through it's all available for you to try out and go extend your own Go make your own editor extensions and tune in next time when we continue our mini series. So happy coding. Mm -hmm.